what's up everybody welcome back to my channel it is your girl colors and here i am with yet another video and today's video is going to be all about my cervix <laughs> that sounds so weird when i say it like that but yeah today's video is going to be pretty much an overall update this is not going to be like a bump date where i'm telling you like oh um this is what's going on baby per se this is going to be the complete update as far as what's happened since my 20 week ultrasound scan i know i have said stuff on instagram and also some stuff just in comments on other videos that i have recently posted and stuff like that but today's video is just going to be like what's been going on what are my health issues what is my problems why am i on bed rest kind of like jump into more into that so yeah if you are interested in hearing all about me <laughs> and my problems i guess please keep on watching yeah so this is actually the second time i recorded this video the first time i recorded this video <sighs> I was still kind of in the heat of the moment of things and I was very sad and wasn't bringing it to a point which I can show you now. I have been so stressed out because I feel like every time I go see them you know they basically try to prep me for if the baby don't make it. They kind of give me their it's nothing we can do so let's just cross our fingers and hope that you don't go into labor and that sucks you know so yeah that's how i was feeling and i was just going through that through the whole video then i was forgetting a lot of details but i just wanted it to be uh clear the first time so i'm gonna try to sum up everything that i said in that video and then we can kind of move on from there so like i said before i do not know if this is going to be two parts or not but uh i'm gonna tell you right now this video is gonna be probably pretty long so grab your popcorn grab anything you grab when you watch youtube child because it's probably gonna be long because i took notes if you could tell you probably can't because of light but this is my notes <laughs> this is my notes child so <sighs> yeah Let's get to it. Okay, so let's kind of backtrack to my 20 week anatomy scan. So let me just explain dates and pregnant. So it was my 20 week anatomy scan the day that I went to the doctor and they sent me to the hospital. But on that day, I was actually 19 weeks and three days. So how it works is that I always schedule my doctor's appointments on Mondays, but I change a new week on Fridays. So they just count that whole week as what that week of pregnancy I would be. So that's the reason why I titled the video the way that I did. It's 20 week anatomy scan, but I was technically 19 weeks and three days. Just to be clear right now, I am 23 weeks, exactly. 23 weeks, so we going through a couple of weeks of issues, child. <laughs> so going off of me being in the hospital bed and waiting on the doctor to come in, so I went to the doctor's appointment, which was my OB's office, and my doctor said, hey, you know, I have a short cervix that is not crazy short, but it is short enough to be concerned about. Go to the hospital and kind of see what they say about it, be monitored. So when I left the OB's office, my cervix was at a 2.8 in length so when i say centimeters i'm talking about the length of my cervix generally if you're not pregnant you're supposed to be between a four and a five so your cervix is a lot longer i guess when you're pregnant it's supposed to be 3.5 and higher so basically where i left y'all at and didn't finish recording doctor came in and told me that i was actually at a 2.6 and i was like okay that worried me because this is a new situation to me i don't know anything about short service or incompetent service or anything like that but i do know that there's an issue and i could potentially lose my baby because of my cervix and you're telling me that basically it's getting worse but the doctor tells me oh but we're not going to rely on the test that our people took here for whatever reason the reason that she gave me wasn't really an understandable one i don't know why but she said she just wasn't relying on the test that 
they took that same day and that they were gonna go based off of my OB office test result, which was the 2.8. She basically told me that she wasn't really worried and that I wasn't having any contractions and that I wasn't dilated and she wanted to just, just put me on bed rest. Uh, by me being in the 2.6 to 2.8 range, I guess you can look at it like that. It was definitely shorter than where it should be, but I guess in her eyes, she was kind of like, uh, which kind of irritated me low key because I'm like, I am in a danger zone. And since this morning to now, which was like a seven hour difference, my service dropped. She was like, outside of that, we're gonna just prescribe you progesterone suppositories, which are basically vaginal hormone pills, I guess you could say, but you just throw it up your vagina every single night and I guess it's supposed to strengthen your vagina. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, straight through your service, I guess. I don't know. <sighs> I'm so ignorant. But she just was kind of like, take the progesterone, be on strict bed rest, which if you're not worried, why are you putting me on strict bed rest? But put me on strict bed rest and then see what fetal medicine doctor says next week. Now, a fetal medicine doctor, I guess, is just specialist office that you would go to to uh, deal with more high-risk pregnancy. So that was that. I didn't really understand how I felt because before leaving, she made it a point to tell me like, hey, you know, let's just take it easy because at the end of the day, if you do go into labor, we can't save your baby because it's not doing viability, especially with you being in, in the 19 week range, we need you to be 24 weeks to save your baby, <laughs> which I thought was very insensitive. So I leave there in the car, I'm confused because when I went to the OB's office, the OB was kind of like, oh, it's just something to check up on. And then now I'm at the hospital, they're kind of like, oh, you know, let's just make sure you're good enough to have a healthy pregnancy. Then it's like, I just went to the birthing center. I actually called the birthing center the same day at the OB's office to get paperwork transferred over to start seeing them. Actually, I was supposed to start seeing them on November 12th, but Due to me being high risk pregnancy now, I can no longer go the natural route unless I am for sure in the 35 week range. So right now, I can't really look forward to that. So basically the night end, I just try to get it out of my mind, focus on the gender reveal because I still had a lot of stuff I had to do. This was a Monday that all this happened and my gender reveal was on a Saturday. So this is one of the big reasons why I didn't have any footage from the gender reveal because I was dealing with the stress of that. Also, if you remember from the 17 week bump day, I was having a lot of pain. Then I was doing a lot of DIYs and stuff like that. So I just had a lot going on, you know what I'm saying? So Saturday finally rolls around and half of the day I can finally get settled and kind of be done, take a breather. Then towards the end of the gender reveal, I started to feel very, very, very sick. Was in a lot of pain. I noticed that I had a lot of yellowy pudding discharge, TMI, but look who you talking to. I was having migraines, I was having back pains. I was just overall in pain to where I had to leave my party and go lay down in the room during the party. And I just feel like in some way it kind of ruined the party and I felt so bad because we worked so hard to get this to this point and you know, I've been so stressed out and everything. I just wanted to relax, but it is what it is because health of the baby and me is more important, but that's what happened. So I was so nervous. I ended up calling the on-call OB and tried to see what they thought about my symptoms and see if I need to go basically to the hospital. So what ended up happening was that when I finally got a hold of the on-call doctor, she seemed very kind of, I don't know who this person was, but she seemed very kind of like, what am I supposed to do type thing? So I'm telling her like, yeah, you know, I just discharged, my back is killing me you know this and that whatever she's like but well, i can't diagnose you over the phone so just go to the hospital and see what they say 
And I'm just like, what is the point of calling you if you go tell me just to go to hospital because you can't figure out my diagnosis or you can't figure out if, if this is something that's normal or this is something abnormal? Like, why are you on call? Like, I know it's hard to like fully diagnose me or figure out, but I feel like she wasn't really even giving me a chance to fully explain what all my issues was. She was just kind of like, oh, I can't figure out on the phone, so just go to the hospital. And I'm just like, that was pointless. So based off of the stuff I told her, I felt like because she wasn't really paying attention to what I was really saying, I had a doctor's appointment Monday, which was scheduled when I left the OB's office the week before. It's just to check up on how the progesterone is taken and everything like that, just to pretty much make sure everything's okay. So I had that in my mind and I'm like, all right, well, I got my OB appointment Monday. She ain't really paying attention. I am in pain, but I don't think I necessarily have to go to the doctor. Maybe if I can just wait until Monday and if they see that it got worse or something like that, then they'll probably send me back to the hospital. By the way, I do not advise doing that. I did go with my gut feeling, but I would say that if you are dealing with issues and problems and stuff like that, just go to the hospital just in case, just to make sure that everything is fine. But in my heart of hearts, I didn't think that it was something that was going to get me the saclage or anything like that. So I just kind of, I'll wait till Monday. Monday comes around. At this point, I am 20 weeks and three days. I am assigned a new doctor as always <laughs> so i'm going in there kind of anxious a little bit just to see what's going on what they think you know they're here to pretty much check up on my cervix to see if the progesterone pills are pretty much working well that's what i thought actually what ended up happening is i went there and i did my same old normal routine vitals and stuff like that so by the time i seen the doctor the doctor said he was only planning on doing fetal doppler tests to basically check on the baby's heartbeat and when he said this i was so irritated like so irritated like you got me coming here off of bed rest which is a 40 minute drive from my house when I'm not supposed to be driving to check on the baby's heartbeat which in some way I can appreciate but this was supposed to be a ultrasound to check to see if the progesterone pills are working baby's always been fine during this time like it baby's always been great it's just been me that started to have the issues so he was like is everything okay and i'm like well i thought we was going to be checking my cervix to see about the progesterone pills he was like no we were just here to check to see if the baby heart beating and i'm just like well i'm kind of uncomfortable you know i just really thought that this is what was happening so based off of my i guess uncertainties or how my vibe was he was like well we weren't planning on doing that i mean we could see if we could squeeze, squeeze you in to do that i mean but really it would just be for kicks and giggles or to make you feel better what his exact words was but outside of that i don't even think it's necessary because you're going to be seeing fetal medicine on Thursday. This is Monday now, I'm 20 weeks and three days. I go see fetal medicine at 20 weeks and five days. So he was like, whatever's gonna happen here is gonna happen there. So, you know, I can do it, but you know, and I was like, yeah, I would feel comfortable if you do it. <laughs> And then he was like, okay, well, um, I guess we can see if we squeeze you in, but you're gonna have to wait like an hour or something before we can get you in or whatnot. Um, but whatever fetal medicine is gonna do, I don't think there's gonna be much difference from today, from three days from now. Now, mind you, I have in my head from when this first all went down at my 20 week anatomy scan, and that doctor was like, any days can make a difference. And then you have this doctor telling me, oh, I don't think there's gonna be a difference from now until then. Mind you, I also was going through all those problems on Saturday after, uh, after my gender reveal. So I'm like, yeah, I really want the ultrasound. So he was like, cool, we'll book you. Come back in an hour after lunch. I actually have a clip that I recorded. I looked a hot mess, child. Don't judge me. I wasn't trying to record. I wasn't concerned. I was on bed rest. I, I was 
nervous and prepared for whatever so i actually do have a clip that i recorded on my phone of my feelings about everything what was said at the doctor's appointment so i will insert that now this week has been so frustrating like i've been so overwhelmed i have been borderline depressed but i haven't been in the mood of recording because last monday i got some information the baby's fine the baby always been fine that's why this situation makes me so upset because there's nothing wrong with the baby but last week i went to my 20 weeks ultrasound for the anatomy scan and before i went to the anatomy scan i I knew, and it's like, I feel like I'm being brushed off. And that's why I'm frustrated. I just feel like this group doesn't 100% take my baby's life serious. They take me serious. They don't take, shit, they probably don't take neither one of serious. Like, I feel like a number. To tell me that basically, I'm just gonna have to deliver my baby. If my baby decides to come, if my service gets shorter, then it's kinda like, it is what it is before 24 weeks. When I've researched and researched and researched of people who had an incompetent cervix, you're telling me I can't get a stitch? What's the stitch for? Ain't the stitch for, or collage is for emergency factors and preventative? And if you can't just do that, just tell me. If I deliver before 24 weeks, it is what it is, is what you're telling me. The cerclage would not exist if this was a situation. There would be no point of cerclage for people who have a weak service. And I've been dealing with all this and dealing with the stress of reveal and dealing with the stress of just being in a relationship and being a pregnant woman that is mentally dealing with a lot because I'm always in pain all the time. That to the point to where I feel like I've been brushed off so much that I don't know what I should be dealing with and what I should be. I don't know what's normal anymore. I don't know when I should speak up, when not to. I don't I don't know, but I know I'm going to move forward cuz it's not like I'm not the type of person who can take bad news. I might cry about it. I might stress about it. I might I might vent about it. You know, I might dwell on it a little bit, but I'll move past it. But what I can't move past is when I know something can be done and nothing gets done and and people don't try and that's the way I feel I feel like they're not trying and they don't care I thought when you have a child it's like something precious and it's not just precious to you it's precious to the people around you it's precious to the people that's help helping take care of the baby and I feel like it's not And I just felt like people who help you go through the process is the people who is going to teach you how to care the most about your child. But that's not the case. And you have to learn how to speak up for your health and the health of your child. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just hoping that I'm making the right decisions. This is all new to me. And I don't know what's normal. So it's hard to feel like I know when this is bad. I know what this is this. I just know what don't feel right. And then you have people telling you that it is right when I know it don't feel right. And especially it's just smacking my face when there is something wrong. And then you still cheat it like there's nothing. I should be going to inside soon. So I think I'm going to stop by McDonald's and get me some ice cream and try to feel better. And see what happened at this ultrasound so I just wanted to record this because there's a lot of stuff I haven't been recording and you know talking to you guys because this stuff is real and people feel like this and everything is just not cute and glance and I'm not gonna always look the best and I'm not gonna always feel the best but I know I'm not the only one so so all that basically happened when as soon as after I came out of the doctor's appointment and was waiting for the lunch part to happen and then was gonna go back in. I never got a chance to record what happened after 
but you, obviously you can see that I was very overwhelmed and frustrated because I really felt like he was so unconcerned. Mind you, like I said, baby was fine, but she could die because of my cervical issue. Like, that's just the facts of it. It was just kind of like, if you want to, like, if you want to, like, I don't know, that just rubbed me the wrong way. But anyway, this is probably gonna be the end of part one, and I don't want it to be too, too, too long, um, when I can just put it in a part two, and then you can continue to see what happened after. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications, and I will see you in part two.